give thanks. Give thanks and praise. Again, we we'll share information as usual. We we'll say American Indian, and we have a definition as a member of any of the Aboriginal peoples of the Western Hemisphere. So that is one of the definition. And then we'll go back to Webster Dictionary 1828. And we are look upon the definition of American. And it is a, as an adjective, it's a pertaining to America. And then as a noun, American is a native of America, originally applied to the aboriginals or copper colored races found here by the Europeans, but now apply to the descendant of Europeans born in America. So when I'm gonna go say American, first we have to define America. And we know say America the supercontinent on this side, Eastern Hemisphere. Basic question, you know, demonstrate these things. So the basic research can find say, you know, the supercontinent called America. Yeah, and then that continent is landlocked and connected, a landlocked border, inland border. So, you know, from the north all the way down to the south, you can actually walk across a dry land there. The only separation are the islands, the archipelagos, which is would be considered sub-regions of the very same continent and this is why we say we as west indians so-called we are a unique group of people man. and by extension us as americans here yeah man so we now go give away a super continent just for an island or just claiming an island. We're not gonna do that. So when I want to say what is an American, this are the one of the first set of definition applied out here by these foreigners. For these people I'm looking at, these are what I'm on term the Arctic people. That's their origin. Yeah, well. The modern history will demonstrate that easily. There is no debate. Yeah, man. So then we can go ahead and because we are use the American dictionary. Yeah. We we'll look at Indian. The word term Indian. Can we try to find American Indian in this dictionary? I'm gonna see it. So we just know say American are the very same people where know they are the aboriginals. Yeah, them, some of them claim themselves as indigenous. But what I'm really, I said, they are, you know, the first people that was here. They are, they are here before all of the other people and come here. Now, this very same American dictionary, Webster, 1828, it are defined Indian. It says an adjective from India and this from Indus, the name of a river in Asia pertaining to either of the Indies, east or west. You see that? Indian pertaining to either of the 
E Indies. East or West. And you know we are here in the West Indies. Now it go on to say Indian as a noun. A general name of any native of the Indies. As an East Indian or West Indian, it is particularly applied to any native of the American continent. So may I hope my people in this region now called Caribbean region, uh, when they hear them say CARICOM, that's a whole governmental organizational structure, fictional out there. I try to remove you from your sovereignty. Yeah. So you have to comprehend when them say Indian. All you have to do is request the Webster's Dictionary, 1828. You know what I mean? Just like how I have it here. And you just type in and you can see the definition. And this is just one definition, but we like this one because it's one of the earlier ones. That's why I'm saying we use the Bouvier 1856 Lexium and them kind of legal dictionary there, what am I call law dictionary. Them thing that kind of expose I to a whole bunch of things. This is why I'm like for Shebu, you know, define these words where, you know, ones I use so we get clarity. You know what I mean? Because without clarity, then confusion will arouse easily once there is no clarity. So if we are talking about America. We are talking about American. Make a work with the American dictionary here for now. Again, Indian pertaining to either of the Indies, East or West. And as a noun, a general name for any native. Of the Indies. As an East Indian or West Indian, it is a it is particularly applied to any native of the American continent. And we can go back and look what a native is and how it is applied. We look at American, it's a noun, a native of America, originally applied to the aboriginals or copper colored races found here by the Europeans. And when we say Europeans, we can be, yeah, we can be specific because here in the West Indies, we have the Spanish came here first. Spanish came here with their Moors. Are there Maroons? Are there slaves? Because a maroon is what is known as an escape slave. This is why I'm not really, you know, swing with them kind of term. Like a long time ago, I discovered them kind of definition here. So when you call yourself a maroon, you're being classified as an escape Spaniard slave. That's why the term it maroon. Yeah, man. All of these things are labels and misnomers, but, you know, when you get to the root or, you know, first use, then at least you gain some clarity. So an American, as a noun, is a native of America. And it originally applied to people like I, who consider ourselves Aboriginals, and them say Aboriginal because that would be the Latin form of saying from origin. When I come from no other place to be here, you know what I mean? We just manifest and exist here. We not talk about no 40,000 years ago and all of those things. And we know when we say we are American, it cannot apply to the Eskimos. Why? 
we call them is affiliated with the Arctic peoples. You know what I mean? And not just affiliated, they are one and the same, basically. Them just as an early set were migrate. So these are clarity. When you say Aboriginal, you're non Arctic. You know what I mean? When you say Indian, it's one and the same. You understand? See it? Name of any native of the Indies as an East Indian or West Indian. I don't know about the East Indian. I don't, I've never heard of an East Indies. However, if you're probably at the location, I said, just like oh, if it, you're on the island, you know what I mean? I said, boy, you're there in a city and thing, you know? In a southern region, and you want to go up on the north coast. You understand? Unless that's how they mean it. But I mean, the definition express and explain itself. Yeah, man. And it's a... Uh, it is particularly applied, Indian is particularly applied to any native of the American continent. Again, the American continent. Not the United States of America or the United States. Two separate and distinct entities right there. So when them say, America, and you talk about the supercontinent, it includes Alaska, Canada, and come all the way down to the tip of Pensacola, including Mexico and all of those places, including this area, what am I call the West Indies or the Caribbean. Yeah, it's all a part of the super continent. So, you know, clarity. Clarity. Remember, you know, every man has a right to decide his own destiny. Every man have that in in inherent right to decide his own destiny. Yeah, man. And even Babylon itself come up with a concept where say, you know, you have a right to self-determination and you have your own right to self-identification. You understand? So it's just according to where a man choose. If you choose to be a state citizen or one of those corporate citizens or a federal citizen or whatever kind of citizen or you choose to be a member of your tribal nation. Yeah, man. And when you say you're Indian as native, as aboriginals, as original people, then we're sovereign in our capacity to this land. Naturally, this is why nothing that the colonizers present can apply to us unless we consent and agree to, to such, you know, say, contractual terms. Nothing applies to us. Their legal standards alternatively used as rules and regulation cannot apply to the American Indian, to the West Indian, to the Awak Indian. It cannot apply. Why? Because we are first people. We are non-Arctic people. And all of these rules and regulations and laws that is there, are coming from the Arctic people. 
I will prove that. Right now we have our, our Jamaica government and we have a head of state, which is the governor general's office and the head of state represent the foreign crown. So the moment you're a Jamaican citizen, then you're subjected to that foreign crown, like I, who chose to renounce it from all of that, remove myself from their political community. Now I am in my sovereign state capacity as an Awak Indian, American Indian. <laughs> it's so simple. And this is clarity. I cannot be a maroon because maroon is classified as an escape Spaniard. An escape Spaniard is called a maroon. Do not take my word for it. Just a check. This is why I acknowledge and accept this whole, you know, classification as American Indian. Yeah, and we here in the West Indies, this American dictionary plainly define who and what we are. Because it's a general name, Indian as a noun, is a general name of any native of the Indies. As an East Indian, this is when the foreigners came from the East, the Hindus came here. Because we only have a West in Indies here. Or West Indian. And again, I'm not going to try to dispute this classification. I'm just showing, look there, it's a West Indian. And we are in the West Indies. And it apply to any native, any Aboriginal man or woman of the American continent that super continent. Clarity. <laughs> Clarity. So what may I say is this, it's at the moment you discover who and what you are, uh, you have a right to self-identification and you have a right to self-determination. These are your inherent Right, you're entitled. These are your entitlement. This is why all of these crown agency or crown state have what is known as a bill of rights, charter of rights, contractual bindingly with these agents. All of them bylaws of it have the bill of rights there. Whether them want to adhere to it or not, it's there. You have to have them, you know, hold them to it or have them apply it. But if you don't know about it, then, you know, it can't work for you. So that's the information where you keep should make you free. I don't think it has nothing to do with the Babylonian currency the Arctic people's financial system that is out there. Yeah, man. Are you as man and woman have to truly express yourself as being free. And when you talk about organizational structures with treaties, we can go back to organization of American states. And you can see where Jamaica as a sovereign island nation is a part of that construct. The oldest organization created. You have the Inter-American Treaty. All of these things are still, you know, extant. But... Again, if you say you're African, then, you know, it now go apply to you. Cannot. If you have African ancestry or African descent, it cannot apply to you. You have to go back 
to where you are from, which is Africa. This is why I must say these people's laws does not apply. The longer time you can get caught up is contractually. If you damage a man, you pay that man two, three, four, five times. You fix that man property, you know what I mean? You make amends, you resolve and settle these things. You don't necessarily have to participate in this Anglia, Saxony, Arctic political construct. We don't have to participate in that mess. You can't say you're Indian and you have a driver's license. Them things are just my own opinion. If we are so free, we have to demonstrate that. And you can't have a driver's license when you when you're you're not engaged in commerce. Because if you go do some commercial business, no, I go get some commercial driver's license. You understand? If I go drive taxi right now, I need a license for that. I don't need no red plates, you know. I just need to have a driver's license saying I'm engaged in commerce. When I'm on the highway for profit or gain, so this is why I need a license. But the moment I'm not out there for profit or gain, I'm, I'm, I'm not in commerce. My automobile is not a commercial motor car. You understand? And the very road traffic act here on this island make provisions for non-commercial motor cars. Yeah, man. Because once you're not engaged in a commerce, you're outside of them thing. And then when you're not a citizen and you're not a voter, you're not a taxpayer, then, you know, what else is there? So people individually have forgot to choose to make their own stand. That's all it is. I can't allow a next man for, for speak on my behalf when I have a voice of my own. And I cannot follow the crowd. You understand? Because I once specifically upon this island stand up this way. So we have for us to use a machete and chop out our own part and take it step by step. And when the foreign crown system, you know, interfere with the liberties, interfere with the inherent dignity, interfere with the absolute rights, then we have to protect it. We have to defend it. You understand? We're not going to just lay down and submit. Yeah, man, we're going to challenge them jurisdiction, man, them authority and them control. We have to do that as American Indians here in this Western Hemisphere. So it's a step-by-step, -step, you know, process, step-by-step -step journey. Yeah, man. So you hear them must say Indian arrow route. How much are we upon the island know about arrow route? Indian berry, Indian bread, Indian corn, Indian crest. Well now, nice, man. Indian ink. What's the Indian ink now? Noun, a substance brought from China, used for watercolors. It is in rolls or in square cakes and is said to consist of lamp black and animal glue that's the indian ink so when people think indian are these persian looking arctic type people you're mistaken you're wrong but how can you know if them are pollute you with you know nonsense this is why we say uh, we have to apply ourselves. We can't go in a certain foreign institution and expect to really learn. You'll be conditioned to function within that construct, yes. But learning, 
that's something different. Yeah, being socially engineered or conditioned is separate and distinct from being autonomous, you know what I mean? Yeah, free thinker. So again, step by step. So you say where an Indian is synonymous with the aboriginals. And the aboriginals is synonymous with the Indian. Yeah, man. And if we look up the word autochthons, well, then we're going to set plants and all of these things. But we do get the gist. We do comprehend. So I say salute to the American Indians out there. Yeah, man. Salute to the tribal ones out there. Salute to the Aborigines out there. Salute to the ones that what call themselves Nijis out there. Yeah, cause, you know. Remember, you know, them say an American as a noun, a native of America originally applied to the aboriginals or copper colored races plural copper colored races non-arctic people you understand and then when you say european now this is when the arctic people are getting introduced to this side this is when the anglia and the saxony people from out of Germany, I get introduced to this side. And this is just recently. Just recently. <laughs> so again, step by step out there. Each one, teach one. And they either build and they either grow. Yeah, man. Now we'll just keep moving forward. Yeah, with clarity. Yeah, man. This is why you can't say you're Indian and you know what your, your, your personal identification where you make. For I, it's my world passport and them document that only through me after the lay my tribal, my our Indian documents. And this is why we say we're in a sovereign state capacity. We as a people, sovereign united state of being. This is how we exist. Yeah, man. <laughs> Clarity, yeah, yeah. Keep it simple, Narasta. Keep it simple, man. Remember, I know. And I write them Lexi on you. See that? A brethren with the same name, Noah Webster, so I'm low. Yeah, now I have nothing to do with that. It's just that we can read for ourselves and, you know, deduce for ourselves. Yeah, man. Again, what is an Indian? A general name for any native of the Indies. As an East Indian or a West Indian, it is particularly applied to any native of the American continent. Clarity. So again, we say give thanks. Give thanks. Give thanks. Let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable unto the most side. Give thanks and praise. That is it. That is it.